I say a car has no grip, it's a sensation that you get that the car is just on top of the surface. So no matter what you do, you can't really feel like the tires kind of gripping the track that's underneath you. It's, it's when, whenever it is, it's when the tire is not working, it's not reacting to the track surface. The balance is all over the place, understeer, oversteer, difficult to drive. It can be track conditions, uh, certain tracks themselves. Some tracks have more grip than others. What can cause a car to lose grip is uh, loose surfaces, overdriving, tire degradation. It could be a tire that's too old, basically. You've, you've, you've used it up, you've worn, up, worn all, the, all the rubber off of it. Uh, temperature, the tires, they want to be in an optimum range, so high, too, too high and they won't have grip, too low and they won't have grip. Mechanical grip is low speed, um, the tire and the car suspension wise working well together or working together to get you that mechanical grip. Um, aero grip is as the speeds increase, um, the downforce that the car generates starts adding more grip, more, more downforce. The way I like to look at the difference between aero grip and mechanical grip is just the difference between low and mid speed corners is gonna be your mechanical grip and mid speed to high speed corners are gonna be your aero grip. Mechanical grip's a lot more forgiving. If you lose the car at low speed, you're typically, you know, have a lot of margin to be able to get it underneath you. But as you get into the faster formula cars or an Indy car where you're using a lot of downforce and these really high speed corners, that margin's very small. Because once you turn the car into a slide, you're losing that aero grip and it's like you lose it instantaneously. Adjustments that the driver and engineer are working for in mechanical grip often has to do with compliance how the car rides over bumps, how the car rides over curbs, how soft it is for your ride quality, but of course stiffer is usually faster. So you have to balance uh, how compliant your car is versus how much mechanical grip it creates. The easiest way to pick up mechanical grip is just softening the, uh, the package. So softer springs front and rear. But that really depends on kind of the track that you're at and what kind of surface that you're running on. Uh, the other thing that we change quite a bit for mechanical grip is just the front and rear anti-roll bars. They have a big uh, impact on how you perceive grip because a bar is instantaneous. So when you turn in, the first thing that you're going to feel is how stiff or how soft your bars are. And then once that car kind of breaks through the bar and starts to load and, and plant in the corner on its way to mid-corner, that's going to be more of your spring package. There's obviously some tracks that you go to where you want as much grip as possible. A street track, a short course, a, you know, a lime rock spec type, type of track where you want to put as much downforce as a thing as possible, not only to give you grip, but also to help with your tire, tire wear and your tire degradation. And then you go to places like Daytona or Le Mans, where a lot of it is defined by your straight line speed. It's always a balance between adding downforce, adding grip versus adding drag. I think a lot of engineers, a lot of teams have some sort of a simulation software that runs by itself and it gives them a baseline to build from depending on the racetrack. Does adding more downforce, does that overall benefit your lap time versus just making the car go as fast as it possibly can in straight lines? When you are primarily on a mechanical grip car, your influences really impact the balance. So just smoothing everything out from brake application to throttle application to your inputs of how you're turning the car into the corner all has an impact on that spike of grip that you might lose from being too aggressive. It's smooth is fast, and what does that mean? Well, you smooth inputs with your hands basically, so not shocking the tire, um, giving the tire an opportunity to generate the grip and the temperature, the proper speed essentially throughout a corner. The tire has a window which it wants to be in every time you go around a corner. So balancing act to put the tire on the absolute knife edge to where you're not over the slip angle but you're not under the level of performance which is there from the tire. So overdriving the tire by slipping the tire too much that might mean using too much brake pressure and using too much steering angle. Every tire has sort of an ultimate grip level and as a driver you can you can change what you get out of that based on how you drive the tire, are you super aggressive with it? Are you overheating the tire and then therefore losing, losing grip, ultimate grip on a longer run? Uh, maybe that was good for one lap, but it wasn't good for five laps, 10 laps, 20 laps, whatever it may be. There's no point going past a slip angle. Every tire has a slip angle, whether it be 8%, 10%, where 
you, you go past the point of where the perfect geometric arc of your steering is, you go past that and that creates thrust, side force in the in the tire and that's what gives you grip. But going past that point, then you're kind of you're giving up that grip also. So you've got to make sure that you don't you don't lock brakes, you don't oversteer the car when you've got understeer, this sort of thing. Tire you know only has an ultimate amount of grip possible and it's up to you, the driver and engineer combination, to figure out how to maximize that for every corner for as many laps as possible. I 100 percent believe a smooth driver is always going to get more out of the tire than uh, someone with, with quick hands, especially entry to mid-corner. Smooth is often related to as fast, but I think that really is a simplified version of not overdriving the car, not overdriving the tire, creating unneeded wear, unneeded temperatures. Yes, smooth is fast, but you still need to be at the limit. I talk about in slow corners, there's often, even with the cars that we drive with heavy downforce, the thing is always moving. You've always got to be on the point, the limit of the grip. And if you're 1% below it, on a fast lap, the person that's maybe half a percent above will be quicker. So you've got to find that, that balance. Not ragged, but you've got to be on the limit.